Today we're going to look at the digestive tract of the pig. And uh, we're going to start with probably the most obvious organ in the abdomen because it's so big, and that's the liver. This is the liver. I don't know why this pig has got kind of a rough surface liver. Uh, it normally would be smooth, but uh, that's okay. Uh, you can see it is quite large. When people uh, see an autopsy for the first time, often what they'll say afterwards is, I didn't know the liver is that big. <laughs> if we uh, look on the underside of the liver, uh, we can see the gallbladder. And it's in a little pocket on the underside of the liver. So there's the gallbladder right there. Right underneath the uh, right above, oh yeah, right underneath the liver, excuse me, is the stomach. And here it is. It's kind of interesting uh, because it feels like there is stuff in the stomach. So that raises a question. How can a, a fetal pig have stuff, food if you will, in its stomach? Because, you know, uh, food comes to the fetus through the umbilical cord not by, by eating, but nonetheless, there's stuff in this pig's stomach. So think about why there might be uh, content in the stomach. If I squeeze right here at the base of the stomach, I can feel a hard knot, and, uh, and that is the pyloric sphincter uh, that controls the flow of stomach contents. We call it chyme out of the liver I'm sorry, out of the stomach, down into the uh, small intestine. Coming into the stomach is the esophagus, and the esophagus is coming in in this area right here. It's right in this area, and it's coming through the, through the diaphragm and uh, going into the stomach. You might remember uh, we took a look at the esophagus when we were looking at the trachea, and it's behind the trachea, so there is the esophagus. Let's take a look um, at the uh, small intestine now. Small intestine comes out of the stomach, so there's the small intestine starting right there, and then it coils around it's the longest part of the digestive tract. Um, in, in a human, it's about uh, oh, 12 feet or so. Uh, and it's got an interesting support called a mesentery. So if you gently pull apart the loop of the uh, small intestine, you can see this transparent membrane with blood vessels that supply the intestine. And that transparent membrane is the mesentery. So it's got a support system. It, it's not just a sausage that's coiled up in the, uh, in the pig. It's actually supported to the back wall with the mesentery. Small intestine goes and goes and goes until it reaches the large intestine. And in the pig, you can tell the beginning of the large intestine by looking for this. This is something that we humans do not have. It's called a spiral colon. And pigs have got this so they can have more large intestine. And that helps them to ferment cellulose like a cow's, a cow's digestive tract is able to do, although not as much. And so the pig can actually get nutrition from things like hay, whereas we humans would not be able to do that. So right here is where Pardon me for a second. There we go. Right here is where the small intestine ends. Right there, ending of the small intestine. And it's plugging into the large intestine over here. And, and uh, this beginning of the large intestine is called the cecum. And coming off the cecum is this structure right here. And you and me, it's about the size of a little finger. Uh, and it's what we call the appendix. And it's bigger in the pig because the pig is actually using this to ferment cellulose and get some, some calories out of things like grass and hay that we would simply starve to death if we tried to live on. So again, small intestine ends right there 
where it plugs into the cecum of the large intestine. And you can see the appendix coming off the cecum. And then you can see the rest of the large intestine coiled up in the spiral colon. And then the end of the small intestine is down here in the uh, uh, abdominal cavity. And uh, it has some stuff in it, which is interesting. Again, that question, how can there be material, food, if you will, in the digestive tract of a fetus? There's an answer to that question. And if you don't have the answer yourself, you should ask your instructor to explain it. We've got one more interesting organ. Uh, and to find it, you, you first find the stomach and then you lift the stomach up and you'll see the pancreas. So if you can, maybe if I turn it, here we go. If you uh, take a look right here, you can see this gland right in here. And it looks like little bits of white tissue kind of loosely held together. Uh, and that's the pancreas. And uh, it is a really important organ because, uh, of course, you know it makes insulin. Uh, but it also is the main source of our digestive enzymes. And uh, if it starts to fall apart, those digestive enzymes leak out and start marinating the body from the inside out, which is a really bad situation. And that's called pancreatitis. And you perhaps know that pancreatic cancer is probably the most lethal of all cancers. So uh, it's not an organ that you want trouble with. And again, it's right underneath the stomach. Just because you'll probably see it, uh, let me point out to you the spleen. The spleen is this organ right over here. It's a blood organ. Uh, it uh, is a blood reservoir. It also filters infections out of the blood. Um, in us, it's more fist shape, uh, but in the pig, it's uh, more of an, a long organ. And you'll probably see that when you're looking for the pancreas. Hope you have a good time with it. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask your instructor.